Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today I have a great project for you. But first, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you are alerted every time I drop a new video. On to the project. Let's talk about today's project. Today we are going to make this layout. It is, um, I think, so fun. It's kind of a um, a spring. It could be Easter because I, I did use the bunny paper, um, but I ended up using it for uh, my daughter's baby sprinkle for my new grandbaby. I thought the colors went well with what we were all wearing. So I tried to recreate this layout to the best of my ability. Um, I did a few things differently, but it's this is pretty much it. And um, I kind of, I tried to recreate this the best I could. It's a little bit hard to figure out measurements and things, but I think what I did works out great. And so this is on page 26 of the March, April Close to My Heart catalog. And it uses these mix-in papers, mostly. Okay, so um, I used most of these. I did throw in a couple from the uh honey honey bunny collection this month's collection and then i had one paper from the gnomes spring gnomes and then i used a couple of the uh, like this is from honey bunny and um this is this is from honey bunny and i think maybe the dots are from honey bunny also and then like i said this one piece is from the gnomes for spring but i just love the plaid i am a plaid lover so I had to put that in there's a link to my blog post so um, if you want to follow along you can and I have it um, right on here so we can um, make it um, so what I did is if I blow this up this is just a black and white image of this page of the picture and I labeled them, what I did was I labeled them in the order that I put them down on the page. That way you can get the same layering effect that I did. At first I labeled them just kind of going across, but then I was like, how am I gonna know which ones that I, I put, you know, first um, and so on. So I'm like, oh, let's do it this way so that I know it'll be easy during my life, okay? So I have my colors and then I have the um, pieces that I cut out. So let's go ahead and make the base first. Okay, we ready? Now, I did not, as you can see, I did not gut the paper. Normally for something like this, I might gut the paper, but there's enough going on that I figured I'm not going to, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so let me, let me move this over. Oh, let me move it this way. Let me get my other mat out. Okay. There we go. I just feel like this is not levels. I don't know. I don't know if that makes it worse or better. Okay, so I'm starting with Periwinkle. This is 12 by 12, okay? And again, you can cut it, uh, gut it out. I would go around about one inch. It will make your paper or your page lighter because this one has basically four layers. So it's a, you know, it's a hefty page. Okay, the next piece that I had is Sage. And here's this, oh, you know what? I think I used Seabrook there. Unless I use the, I use Seabrook. Let me get the Seabrook. I thought it was Sage and that's what I put on my, uh, my guide, but I use Seabrook. Both of these are in the um, coordinating 
cardstock for the mix-in. So if you look at the mix-in, I know it's hard to see, and they don't show a picture of it, but there is a mix-in coordinated cardstock. There's Periwinkle, Seabrook, Sage, and Honey Butter. And um, I thought I used Sage, but I apparently used uh, Seabrook. Okay, so this piece is 11 by 11. So this Seabrook is 11 by 11. I'm no, I'm getting down to like one or two sheets of many of the colors. So, okay, I'm going to attach this and basically just center it on the page. Since it is 11 by 11, that means that there's going to be a half inch on each side. So I'm just going to use my Versa mat to you know kind of line it up with a half inch half inch half inch half inch okay so that's pretty good okay now here I well then they did too but I threw in the sapphire and the sapphire is not part of the mix in coordinating cardstock um, but again I know it's everybody's favorite and that is ten and a half by ten and a half. Okay, um, so let's measure ten and a half by ten and a half. Save these because they're sapphire. <laughs> And I am using the dark side or the regular side of all of this paper. You know that close to my heart paper is two-toned. One side is darker, one side is lighter. The true color is the darker side. Okay, now this one's only going to have a, a quarter inch border around it. Okay, there we go. Okay, and then let's do the white daisy. Let's see, and the white daisy is 10, 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. Let me measure that just to 100, make sure. Yeah, 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. a new blade in my cutter today because my pieces were starting to cut fuzzy. It's ten and a half. I want ten and a quarter. So let me make sure this is ten and a quarter. Yeah. So I did put my new blade in. Although if you know they stopped making this particular cutter and these are hard to find. I ordered this one and it came from Australia. I ordered on, uh, God, I don't know, Amazon? I think Amazon. I was surprised. Okay. Now you can see how it would be, this would be a good time to get all of these papers. Right, you don't, it's a lot going on. Okay, now this again is going to have basically um, a, an eighth of an inch all around. Okay. Okay, we've got the base kind of done. I put, this is actually a sticker, um, but you can use a zip strip if you want, uh, or a piece of cardstock that's cut a half an inch and then obviously by the 10 and a quarter, okay? But um, 
this is a sticker and I wanted to use it because of the the little eggs. I thought that was cute. I was going to use this for Easter, but then I thought it was perfect for this um, baby shower. Okay, so I'm going to use this sticker here. But again, you can use a zip strip that's a um, uh, half an inch by ten and a half or a piece of paper. Now this is, as you can see, I, the bottom of the sticker or the bottom of your zip strip or whatever is at the six inch mark. Okay, so that's your guide, and I don't know that I mentioned that on the blog. I dropped my iPad. Sorry, guys. Yeah, this is a really good picture to use things from your stash, or a really good layout to use things from your stash. Okay, so I'm going to use my T-square ruler, and I don't know if these are still in stock, but I love it ever since I got it. Okay, and then it's 10 and a half, so we're going to have to snip this. Okay. It really helps me keep things in line. I'm gonna pull this up a little bit and trim it a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so again, the bottom of this strip is at six inches. Okay. And then I used Wisteria for this these pieces because it looked to me in this layout that they used, right, that they used a different color. I'm not sure if that's grape or what, but I, I use wisteria, which I think it looks good. And these are um, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Okay, these, those are the mats. Okay, so let's cut those. Here's some wisteria. So I'm gonna cut it three and a quarter, and then you need two of them, or whatever size mats that you're going to use, because I know, I think Michelle said she was using a different size picture. You could put a four by six picture there, right? It would be, it would be the same, basically. Okay, uh, so let's put these down. And I basically put this, I centered it from top to bottom and then tried to make as much on the left hand side as I did on the top and the bottom. So it's about, not quite, but about a quarter inch all the way around. Okay, and then again, I'm going to maybe put a little bit more between the two. There we go. And center it. And then you can either put in photo placeholders or your photos. And I, I did print off photos um, for today because I'm getting low on my photo placeholders. And guys, I'm I'm really torn. I'm I don't know if I should stock up on photo placeholders or figure that I'm going to run out eventually. So just you know, I have stamps that have the picture sizes, so maybe just move away from the photo placeholders. I don't know. So anyway, I printed pictures out to put on here. This, these are from the baby shower. Uh, 
help with that. Let's see if I can, there we go. Move the light out of the way so it's not a glare. Okay, um, and then before you put the sticker down, I if you can see, I did put some pen work around. So let's do that. And basically I just freehanded lines and I purposely made them wiggly and I purposely, I did two. I don't know, let me show you up real close. Um, you see how I did two and then I tried to make them sort of, uh, see there, um, go, you know, over and under each other. Like I tried to, to make it be a little bit swishy, okay? So let's do that. And it's only around, it's only on this top half, up to where the, the sticker is, okay? It's not all the way around the white. And I turned this upside down just because I like to pull down on my right side, because that's kind of when I do my best. Okay, so I'm always turning it so that even though I'm trying to make it wonky, I don't want it to be too wonky. So I'm trying to pull down on my right side. Now, if you're left-handed, you might want to do it, you know, pulling down on your left. Okay, and now I'll go back and I'm gonna make this one a little more wavy like this, just to try and get it I want it to be swishy. You know, when I started scrapbooking back in, I don't know, 1994, maybe, yeah, maybe around 1994, I started with Creative Memories, and my consultant was very much keep it simple. She always said, simple pages equals completed albums. And a lot of the designs that we did from her was just pen work. Like I would draw a line down the side as like a border and then make these swishies around the side in different colors um, and then put the pictures on, right? So I really love to do this. Okay, who's ready for the dovetails? Guys, this is the main attraction. Are we ready? Okay, so I'm going to put this aside for one second. And we'll just do all the cutting. And I will um, uh, put the letters on them about what's what. Okay, the first one I'm going to do is A. A, and it's this, on mine, it's this yellow stripe piece. Okay. See, I have these. Oh, let me get this out of the way for a second. Let's see what I have here. Okay. I did pull all my pieces out so that um, I, I knew that I had everything and I didn't have to look for it. Okay. So the first piece A is this one. And this piece is um, two by four and a half. And if your paper is directional like this, I want the I want the lines to go this way. So my four and a half obviously is the height. So I'm gonna cut that first. Four and a half. And then two inches. Now the beauty of this layout is you can use any size scraps you have laying around. You don't have to make it exactly like what I have, okay? So um, if you want it to look exactly like mine, then obviously use these pieces. But if you have a piece of this that's two and a half, go ahead and use that, right? No reason not to. Okay, so this is A. So I'm gonna put A here so I don't, I don't forget that. Okay, um, B, well, let me explain too. You might you might say, why are these all over the place? I, I did them in order, but I'm going to put them down on the page so that you know 
if you you know what's the very bottom layer which ones are the next layer which ones goes on top so that's how I labeled them from you start with a and work your way down to uh, K okay so B is here now B for me is this this purple check so you only see like this piece down in here okay so that B is um, Two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. Okay. So let's do let's see, four and seven eighths. And remember, seven eighths. I mean, let's talk about the seven eighths. Seven eighths is the, this medium sized line right before the five, because when you hit the five, when you hit the five, it's eight eighths, eight out of eight. That medium line is seven seven eighths, seven eighths. Okay. So we're going to go to the medium line right before the five. That's four and seven eighths. And then two and seven eighths. Again, it's the medium line right before the three. So this is a wide one. Okay. And this is B. Okay. Let's see, C, so we have to go over to the very end. So you can see that this one's on the bottom. Okay, so that's why that one's C. So it's on mine, it's this yellow and green plaid. Okay, and C is um, one and a half by four and a half. Okay, so let's see. These four and a half. Okay. So one and a half by four and a half. And I just really love this plaid. The other side is the clouds, which I also love that. I've said that I would get the spring gnomes collection just for this cloud paper. It's so nice for background paper on cards. Okay, that's C. Let's see, what's D? D is, okay, D is the plaid. This plaid one here. How do I find my blog? Okay, I'll, I'll post a link. Okay, it's periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com. Okay, so we're doing this plaid, and that's one and three quarters by three and a half. So the here's the plaid. Okay, this is from uh, the Bunny Bunny with the butterflies. The butterflies would have been cute too, but I didn't like so much glacier, so. So one and three quarters by three and a half. So let's do three and a half. And then one and three quarters. I want more of the blue, so there we go. Okay, so this was a D. So I'm gonna write that on here. Okay, let's see, E, let's look at E. E is, um, okay, E is this paper, and it might be really hard to see, but E is this piece down in here. It's a sage green with like medallions on it. Okay. It's this piece, uh, this one here, E, and that is one and a half by four. One and a half by four. Let's see how, okay, this is four inches, so I'm just gonna do one and a half. Okay. 
Okay, and this was E. Okay, we're getting there, guys. I think we're about halfway done. E, F. F is this um, honey butter circle. Honey butter circle. And that's this piece here. It's on the back of this one. And that is, what's that, F? That is two and a half by four and a half. Two and a half by four and a half. So let's see, this is four and a half. Okay, so let's make this two and a half. And that was F. Okay, and I got my stack going to the right over here. Okay, um, G, G is this honey butter polka dot. Okay, so it's kind of this central piece here. And that is going to be two and a quarter by four. Kind of find it here. Huh, I had these all out, guys. do four. Let's make it four inches. And two and a quarter. Okay, so this was G. Okay, H. H is um, this heart, periwinkle heart, which is perfect for uh, my pictures. I don't know if you can tell, but um, her theme was heart, so we're all wearing heart sweaters. Isn't that kind of cute? That's why I thought this would be a cute layout for this. Okay, so this is H, and that is... Two and a half by five. Two and a half by five. So let's see, is this five inches? Yes, yeah, so let's make this two and a half. Okay, and this was H. Okay, we're almost there. I, okay, I is the bunny paper. I is the bunny paper. And if you don't want to do the bunny paper, you don't have to. But I, I thought for baby, it's, it's cute for Easter, but it's also cute for baby. Um, two and a quarter by, two and a quarter by two and three quarters. So let's see, two and three quarters by two and a quarter. And I think I'm gonna, I want this piece here. And I don't wanna put the bunny's butt, so that's, there we go. Okay, so what did I say? This is I. I do like this floral on the back, but We only have two more. J, so now we're on J, and J is this leaf one, okay? And that is, you guys, you can screenshot that if you need to. Yeah. 
J is two by four. And that's this piece here. So let's make this two inches. Hopefully it's four, yeah, by four. So this was J, we got one more. And it's this, um, this polka dot one, okay? It's over here, it's this K, this one right here. And the K is two, two by two and a quarter. Two by two and a quarter. So let me find the polka dot. Here we go. Here we go. Um, and this is from the mix-ins, and this is another good cloud. We've had we had two good cloud papers this past uh, month. This is from the spring gnomes, and then this is from the mix-ins. So this is something you want to get your hands on. Okay, two inches by two and a quarter. Wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. Is that two and a quarter? It's three and a quarter. I mean, again, you can put whatever. It's three and a quarter, guys. So um, if you follow the blog and you want it to be exactly, this is three and a quarter. I'm sorry. Let me let me fix that. Um, we are going to dovetail these. I didn't do it while I was cutting, but and I'll put these kind of in order. Okay. Okay, let's start with A, which is this yellow piece here. And uh, when I dovetail, I cut in the middle and then I cut from the corners to there and then the corner to there. Okay. And again, I put these in order of how I put them down. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about which layer you put on. I do like to make sure my uh, points are have adhesive on it. And this one I put up right up against the uh, edge of the white daisy and up against this zip strip. Okay. Okay, B is this one. So it's this big piece here. And I don't have a specific amount that I go in. But what I usually do is just do about, you know, half of my scissors. I kind of use that as my guide. Okay, now this piece B, I'm going to put not right up against A, but I'm going to leave about a quarter inch or so in between. Okay. Okay, good. Oh, good, Vicky. Okay, A, B, C, and C is this piece all the way to the right. And again, I'm do you can see that some of these, I don't know, there's like four layers. One, two, three, four. Some of these are four layered. So I wanted to make sure that you didn't, you know, put one piece down and then realize, oh, it's supposed to go on top of this other piece. So I made it so it was really easy. You didn't have to think about which um, which ones, you know, you had to put down first. And I did have to go back through and <laughs> and uh, change all the letters on that graphic because 
I didn't think about it until after I had labeled them all nicely going across, you know, A, B, C, D. And then I thought, well, that's not very useful. How do I tell people where, when to put down which one? Also, I know some of you aren't scrapbookers. Some of you are card makers. You can make a very similar card like this. Okay, um, for this one, I'm going to put it all the way up against the right side of the white daisy and up against the zip strip. So you can make a card, right, four and a quarter wide, put a, you know, a little zip strip or a piece of paper and then do all kinds of flags like this. Okay, that's A, B, C, good. D, D is, for me, it's the plaid. So when I mark D, that's, Okay. Again, I like my the tips of my things taped down. So, okay, now this one I'm going to put it I mean basically it's it's going to cover A and B. And if you notice the center of of my uh, D falls on to A. So it's not quite centered. It's a little bit more towards the A, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna look where this point is on my piece D, and I'm going to make sure that it's on this yellow piece. But exactly where you put it doesn't really matter. Okay? Okay, so that was D. Okay, E, let's see, which one's E? E is, okay, E is the um, green. Medallion, so that's. Okay, now this one, this one, what we're going to do is we're going to overlap B a little bit, you know, just a little bit. So, I don't know, maybe half an inch onto B is where I, is where I put this one. So that's E. And now we're going to do F, which on mine is this one. F, let's see, make sure, yeah, it says F. Okay. You know, if I were doing this just in my book and or my own scrapbook and not on um, Alive for You, I may mix these up a little bit so that it doesn't look exactly the same. Like I might have actually inverted it so that this was on this side. You know what I'm saying? But just so it didn't look like two side by side. Um, but I wanted to keep it the same so because I knew it was already confusing to you. But if you're thinking about it and you're making two, you know, uh, two sides, a left-hand side and a right-hand side, you might want to just mix up the colors a little bit. Like you can use the same papers but make something different, A, you know, an E and so on so that it's mixed up a little bit. Okay, so this one, what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to use this piece, my C piece, as a guide and then I'm going to overlap this one onto my C piece by about a half inch or so. And so what I want is I kind of want to be able to see the tail of this a little bit. Okay, so I put it over far enough so that I can still see the tail. 
of this piece. Um, so just to kind of give you a guide. Again, all of this is flexible. Wherever you put it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that was F. G is this honey butter. Little piece here. Let's dovetail this. Okay, this is G. Um. Okay, um, so this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece, this plaid piece as my guide. And if you can see, I have like a little space so you can see a little bit of that periwinkle in between and so that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to leave a little bit there and then you want you kind of want to be able to see a little bit of this piece here the tail so that can kind of help you place it okay that was G H is this um, heart one, which I think it looks really good with my sweater. Actually, this is this is almost exactly the color of Ellie's sweater. We did blue hearts because blue for boy, and hearts because it was February 11th, so close to Valentine's Day. So that was the theme. This gingham would be pretty on there too. I should have used the gingham. Okay, now this one I'm going to place so that I want to be able to see a little bit of this green. And I do want to maybe see a little bit of this yellow, this honey butter, if you can manage it. So, so I'm going to put it like right here. You can see the green from this piece, and then you can see a little bit of the honey butter there. This next piece is I, and I'm going to not go quite as far with this one because I don't want to dig into the bunny. So I'm going to make it kind of a deep, uh, like a really shallow one. So you can see the bunny. Now I didn't really fussy cut any of these papers except maybe this bunny one. Um, but you do want to keep in mind the direction. Like the only one that I really, like this one, you, you know, you need to worry about the direction because the bunnies are standing up. This one, I wanted the diagonals to be going that way, but they didn't have to be. But everything else pretty much is random, so you don't have to worry about the direction too much. Okay, this one I'm just centering over, you know, between this one and this one, just, just put it on however you want. I am kind of keeping in mind where this lands. Um, this corner was a little bit to the left of, so here's the peak of my plaid and the, the corner of this one is just a little bit to the left of that. Okay, that was I. J is this um, leaf one. I've only got two more. And, we're, and just perfect timing, I think, guys. Okay, just two more. Okay, um, and then this one I'm going to place, so I want this 
point of the dovetail to be just to the right, maybe maybe about half inch from the peak of my purple hearts, the periwinkle hearts. So someplace like this. Okay, so you can see how this this peak was to the left of that the peak in the periwinkle or the. So this point is to the left of the peak in this one. Okay, and then the last one. And really, you could put this anywhere. I I could put it. I could have put something here. This is K, and if you don't like this many flags, you don't have to put this many. If you want more, you can definitely put more. I think they had a little bit more in the on the layout. Um, okay, now this one, I'm going. I wanted to bridge this piece, this leaf piece, over to the green and yellow plaid. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put it like put it like that. Okay. Okay, we got that done, guys. Now I did have um, I did use these journaling squares uh, stickers, and um, I really recommend these. If you haven't got these yet, these are a must-have. You, I know you can use, you know, just white, you know, like I could cut this, I could cut this into quarter inch strips or whatever, but truthfully, my, my trimmer always seems to, um, make my white paper a frizz at, on the edges and I never like the look of it. So, so I love it. These are sticky. Okay, and I just I just stuck these down just kind of in a random size. I didn't really measure. I just did something like this. And I put three, you could put, you know, five, you could put whatever you want. And I tried to make them about half inch apart I mean a quarter inch apart I could have put this down but I'll save this for another one so that you can journal on here okay and then let's put a sticker up here let me push these down Okay, let's see on here. What do we want to use? I'm going to use a sticker sheet from the Honey Bunny. And I guess I'm going to use this one. I could use this one, but it's pink, so let's use this one. Now, if you notice, this is set askew. It's, it overlaps a little bit, which is how they did it in the picture, you know, in the catalog. So that's how I did it. You could potentially do a smaller smaller one if you don't like the overlap like that and I am going to pop it up gosh I'm not doing very good there um, I'm going to try and be not crazy with my foam tape but I hate a saggy middle in my foam tape so you know on the Thing. So I always put one in the, in the center. I, I just can't help that. That's just, this is as little as I can use. I don't like when you put it on there and then this center sags down. Especially, like, this is a journaling one. You don't want a journaling one to sag because when you write on it, it's going to sag and you might poke through the sticker as you're writing. Okay, I'm going to put this here. Oh, God, I love that so much. Yeah, I love the journaling strip so much. Okay, and then just to finish it off, 
I have the dot. Okay, so I'm going to put, I put some yellow down here. I'm going to put them over here. And I did overlap them a little bit onto the sapphire. On this page, I put them here. Um, and then here I put some of the pink ones. I'm going to put the blue, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't really like that. Which one do I like here? I think I'm going to put, I'm going to put the pink like I did here. Where should I put them? Put one there. Put one there. And then I'll put a medium one up here. Okay. Here I put one here, one here, and one there. One on the actual sticker. Okay, there we go. The page is done. What do you guys think? That wasn't too hard, was it? I hope you enjoyed the project. The products seen in the video can be purchased at my website, thecraftychemist.stampinup.net. I have a Facebook group, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I go live and do demos every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central Time. I also have a Facebook VIP group, The Crafty Chemist Presents Stampin' Up! Find me on Instagram at Crafty Chemist Designs, TikTok at Crafty Chemist Designs, YouTube at Crafty Chemist Designs, and my blog, periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com.